There aren't any good missions to do. Han Zio's not been here for so many days. I miss him. Frenzied Sword shook his head upset. Exactly. Bun Hit Dog said with a bitter face, I don't even have any material for new episodes of my show and have been receiving tons of complaints on the forums. It would be even worse if not for you and God Hao being my guests. Hao Tian was a man of few words, he nodded as a reply. Maple Moon had already gone to the fair to shop. The passion for shopping and women was the same even in the game. This time, the four of them realized something and looked up at the same time. Whoosh. The sound of a helicopter came from the sky far away, getting louder and louder. The searchlight showed the location of the helicopter, and it landed on the helipad in the sanctuary. Very soon, a commotion started in that area, and players headed over continuously. The players in the square closed their stores one after another and rushed over in excitement. The wave of people headed toward the helipad. Black Phantom had returned. As soon as he walked down the plane, Han Zio noticed the countless players standing in the streets near the helipad, all looking at him with curiosity and welcoming him. Wow, the treatment is not bad at all. Han Zio was surprised. He wondered if he should thank them for their efforts but decided not to. Huang Yu was waiting, and he immediately walked over to report the situation. Following your plan, more areas of the sanctuary have finished their construction. The war made quite a number of wanderers join the sanctuary. There are now more than 23,000 residents. Tell me something that I don't already know. Han Zio raised his palm and stopped him. He could see the construction progress in his mission log, so there was no need for any further elaboration. Huang Yu hesitated and said, One more thing. Inhumans have been fighting each other regularly, damaging public property. Han Zio's eyes sparkled. What Huang Yu referred to as PvP. This was something that the players loved to do, and it definitely could not be banned. The great mechanic Han had a flash of an inspiration. Get some men and build a large arena in the next few days. Huang Yu was stunned. Arena, this is a sanctuary. What's the use of an arena in a sanctuary? To have performances for the refugees. They might not even have a filling meal. Isn't that a waste of space and resources? Huang Yu could only hold himself from giving his suggestion. But Han Zio shook his head and said, Your thought process is too rigid. The Inhumans have too much energy. The arena will give them a place to use that energy. We can sell tickets and earn back what we spent on it. Not only are we building the arena, but we are also going to encourage the Inhumans to fight in the arena, then create a fair betting system with our guarantee and earn handling fees. Making profit was not the main reason to build the arena. What was more important was that it was another step toward the player's main city plan. It was a function that it must have. The more the players enjoyed PvP, the more they would like the arena. The players would also have a stronger sense of belonging to Sanctuary 3. Furthermore, the long-term goal of this action was to host the future Galaxy Pro League. After spending a day settling several cumbersome issues, the resources from Dion arrived. The first task was to build a new mechanical suit. Han Zio did not plan to duplicate according to the blueprint. He wanted to innovate freely from that basis and create an enhanced combat suit. He already had some ideas. A large number of parts and resources were placed near the workstation. Han Zio counted them, rubbed his hands, and showed a confident smile. Let's begin. On the seventh day, it's finally complete. That was tiring. Han Zio was excited. He rubbed his cheeks strongly to ease the slight exhaustion from not sleeping during the previous nights. The new combat suit used the same inner core concept as Viper, with PE0 nanotechnology fiber and muscle in between, still providing enhanced strength and dexterity, and he did not miss out on any of the original weapon modules. The outlook had the same style as Viper, dark black with flashes of blue light from the energy pipes, a complicated, precise streamlined shape with some changes. Its size was bigger and it had more obvious edges, like protruding scales, giving off an entirely different feeling. If Viper felt like a hunting small venomous snake, the new combat suit felt like a black mamba stalking its prey in the dark, waiting to unleash a lethal strike. His machinery affinity and machinery skill both improved after the class advancement, so he enhanced the bonfire reaction furnace. He made a few hidden recesses at the back of the mechanical suit that were connected to the energy core. Energy blocks could be embedded into these recesses. If the energy of the bonfire reaction furnace was finished, these would be the backup energy source. There was also another function, extra power output. The armor was made with the new alloy that he had fused from, Ellie Iron Alloy. It had a better defense than the platinum alloy. The helmet had a module that could read nerve signals. It was embedded on the inner side of the helmet like a metal plate, and the functions of the suit could be controlled with just a thought. He gave the new combat suit the ability to fly. 
which man did not dream of soaring through the skies. Men's romance is the stars and the seas. You have successfully enhanced. Do you want to give it a new name? With a flash of insight, a suitable name appeared in Han Zio's mind. Named successfully, you receive customized blueprint. I definitely have great naming skills. Han Zio was very satisfied. Amphipter is a flying serpent, so it really conveyed a clear image. You have been losing blood very frequently, causing your body to be weak, stunted, and your organs recessed. Optimistically, you have three years left to live. Without waiting for the expressions of the people present to change, Emerald Grass then said, Of course, that's the case for a normal person. Although your body is weak, your cell activity level is something I have never seen before. As she was speaking, Emerald Grass took out a few microscope photos, then said excitedly, Usually, the self-healing of a human body is very slow. Undamaged cells slowly split into new cells to repair damage. In comparison, superhumans have stronger self-healing abilities. Unbelievable. Emerald Grass was very tempted. She looked at Aurora with sparkles in her eyes. The passion in her eyes made Aurora shrink toward Gila. She knew that look. All of the people wearing white coats in the germinal organization had looked at her this way. I want to acquire some of your blood as an experiment material. Is it possible that? No. Gila rejected without hesitation. She looked at Emerald Grass hostily and seemed like she was going to act at any moment. Aurora was her sensitive spot. She would not allow anyone to violate her. I admire your attitude. Science is all about non-stop improvements and the everlasting ambition of wanting to know the core technology. However, this is a sick person, not your test subject. Also, I guess you can't beat the redhead. Emerald Grass curled her lips, turned away to keep her diagnosis tools, and said casually, she didn't need to be diagnosed at all. Her power has just been suppressed for too long and can't fully take effect. As long as she doesn't die, her power will slowly recover and so will she. It might even. Never mind. Anyway, she just needs to rest for a while, then her body will recover and her scars will disappear. Han Zio raised his eyebrows. He understood what Emerald Grass did not say, and it made him think. Aurora became a liquid in his previous life. There had not been a chance to see the exact effect of her power, so he wondered what it would be like once it got stronger. Since she's the younger sister of Gila, Aurora will definitely not be much weaker. Could it be controlling life forms? Han Zio guessed randomly. For him to know Aurora's status, he had to get in combat with Aurora, and the bottom line of that would be to slap this pitiful little girl. With his power, the result would not be very optimistic. By the way, she was brainwashed once, and another personality was created. She will become a puppet that only follows orders once it's triggered by the keyword. Do you have a way to solve that? Han Zio repeated what Cyberloss said. I'm a pharmacist, not a psychiatrist. You should find a professional, Emerald Grass said casually without even turning around. Han Zio contemplated while touching his chin. Suddenly, he looked at Gila. Hard things about the mind Gila's strong point. Upon noticing his sight, Gila waved her hands and frowned. My power is too invasive. I'm scared of making mistakes, and the risk is too high. Then you'd better discover and enhance your power more. Han Zio felt helpless. In his mind, Gila at her peak could play with the soul of a life form like playing with plasticine without hurting the fragile soul. Leave if there's nothing else. I've asked a few inhumans to test my drugs, don't disturb me. They looked at her. Emerald Grass took out a transparent container filled with a weird and dark green liquid that was still bubbling, holding a syringe and flicking the tip of the needle. Emerald Grass was what was known as a pharmacist in technological civilizations. In magical civilizations, pharmacists were called witches. Han Zio paid a silent tribute for three seconds for these players testing the drugs. To sacrifice themselves for technological advancement. How noble. What are your thoughts about this? Gila only showed interest for things that involved Aurora and did not have the cold face like she always did. She only asked for an opinion from Han Zio because she trusted him. Han Zio had saved Aurora from the Sea of Pain, and they had no friends or family in the world, so only Han Zio was trustworthy. Han Zio pinched his chin and said in a low voice, It's best to rest more. I will build a special wheelchair for her. Also, your sister was imprisoned for so long, so it's better to let her connect with the outside world. Make some new friends. If you are worried, I can introduce a few lawfully good teenagers. Gila nodded solemnly. I owe you one. You already owe me. Gila was struck speechless. After a period of silence, Gila asked the question she had been wanting to ask. Why did you save my sister? Foresight, of course. Han Zio gave the mighty reason. So, what did you foresee? Gila frowned. Han Zio bullshit Ted and said, I saw that your sister's power will save my life once in the future. Do you believe that? 
That would make sense. Hila understood. At this time, a small hand pulled his shirt. Han Zio looked down and saw Aurora was looking up at him with a serious face. Uncle Zero, I will definitely save you. Aurora took what he said seriously. The next day, Han Zio built a wheelchair and gave it to Aurora. Real leather armrest and seat with stretch cotton inside, giving you comfort like your mother's embrace. And the best part is, Han Zio flipped open the anti-dust cloth and said, This wheelchair is powered by a foot pedal, but inside is a mini engine, and there is a gear shift beside the armrest. It can go up to 40 kilometers per hour. I just wanted a normal wheelchair. Hila's eye corner twitched. She had never heard of a wheelchair powered by a foot pedal. Then what is the wheelchair even for? 40 kilometers per hour. Are you hosting a wheelchair race? Are you crazy? What kind of mechanic am I if I didn't make any modifications? Han Zio picked his nose and glanced at Hila. Hila felt the look known as despised from a professional from Han Zio's eyes. Aurora, however, quite liked the wheelchair. It was like getting a new toy. At this time, Frenzied Sword and the other three approached. Han Zio called them over to play with Aurora and gave the four of them a pile of missions. He was just worried about not having suitable missions to give them. He could not of all of them dance and sing like Frenzied Sword. Aurora connected with Maple Moon the best, and not long after, Bear Cub was on Aurora's legs with its belly facing up and rolling around, making Aurora laugh. The scene was filled with warmth. Hila's eyes became gentle. She stepped back to the side and watched her sister play with her new friends. For many days, Aurora smiled brighter and her health improved at an obvious rate. Hila and Aurora settled down. The situation of the expedition war was getting better and the arena in the sanctuary was also completed. The arena was built near the square, very close to the reviving point of the players. Sometimes, the players could hold back during PvP, other times, they might kill the other accidentally, and the person might lose some EXP. Even then, it could not prevent the players from their thirst for blood. As it was a long journey to leave the city, the arena became the top choice. I shall start the fire to help them understand the use of having gamble battles in the ring. Han Zio's eyes sparkled. I've been quite unlucky recently. Rebels shall rule immediately noticed. As an experienced player, usually when an NPC talked to themselves, it meant a new mission could be triggered. Mr. Black Phantom, what are you troubled with? Rebels shall rule asked. Maybe we can help you to solve it. Han Zio looked at him and shook his head. No, no, there need to be at least 10 people to help me. The people of Sky Territory suddenly felt energized. It was a mission indeed, and it was a team mission. This was a mission given by Black Phantom himself, when did he ever scam them? Large guilds always had a lot of members. Rebels Shall Rule created a 10-man team on the spot. Seeing this, Han Zio said slowly, Sigh, one of my robots malfunctioned, and I can't control it anymore. I hope you can bring its chip back to me. He said a mission as he was talking. Mission Type, Team Chain Mission Mission Introduction Due to unknown reasons, a guard robot has malfunctioned and gone out of control. First Round Requirements Defeat Ranger X204 and bring the chip back to Black Phantom. First Round Rewards 25,000 EXP plus one relationship point with Black Phantom. Chain Mission Rebels Shall Rule was surprised. Just the reward for the first round was already decent, so the reward would definitely be richer in the later rounds, and it could even increase Black Phantom's relationship points. The relationship points of Black Phantom would not increase after 10 no matter how much money they gave. As for his relationship points, all the players had the desire but were helpless. He placed quite a few strong machines in his item shop. There were ones that had blue and even purple grade. However, the relationship point requirement to buy these were all more than 10. They could only look at them, these were all Han Zio's bait. Relationship points were worthless alone, but he made it worth something, and this was how the currency system was created. The surrounding players saw this and also created teams, but Han Zio did not bother about them. Now the players wondered, why could the Sky Territory trigger the mission but not them? However, they were used to the random triggering mechanism for Black Phantom's missions, so they did not hang on to it. Suddenly, a group with familiar ID and guild name entered his sight. Han Zio only then spoke again and repeated what he had previously said. Hem, hidden mission. The members of the Guild of Gods were surprised. An hour later, in the north city side of the sanctuary, a chase was underway. The ten-man team gasped for breath as they chased behind an extremely fast ranger. Fast, faster, don't let it run away. Rebels shall rule gasped for breath. They came to this construction area, following the mission requirement, and chased after this out-of-control ranger. The ranger had very strong firepower. Many people in their team had died, and only then could they damage the ranger till it had very little armor left. But when that happened, the ranger suddenly started running. 
Damn it, why is it so agile? The people of Sky Territory had bitter faces. It's more familiar with the environment and the terrain than us, has it developed consciousness? At this time, in the high rank room at the center of the sanctuary, this ranger was actually completely under his control. He limited its strength, only letting it out after he took out a huge amount of its ammunition and weaponry yesterday. It was a downgraded version, aimed to give the people of Sky Territory a tough victory. If it was a complete Generation 2.5 Ranger attacking freely with full firepower, more than half of these players would have died in an instant. Of course, the Sky Territory players did not know this, they thought that they were cooperating very well, and only through that they were able to almost destroy this out-of-control robot. Han Zio looked at the radar map. Suddenly, he smiled evilly, and he controlled this almost dying Ranger to speed up suddenly distancing itself from Sky Territory after many turns and dashed toward the Guild of Gods, which was searching for the target. Jupiter and the rest were shocked when the ranger showed up, then they were overjoyed. That's the target. Quickly, focus fire. After just one round of attacks, the ranger broke into pieces, and parts were scattered on the ground. The Guild of Gods was confused. They had hardly done anything, so why did this robot explode? Putting the doubt behind, Jupiter picked up the mission item from the pile of broken parts. At this time, Sky Territory arrived late, and they were enraged upon seeing what had happened. Damn you, Guild of Gods, you dare to steal our monster. Rebel Shall Rule was furious. The target that they had chased through more than a dozen streets had been stolen. Anyone would have been angry. The screen turned black. Han Zio threw the laptop to the side, lighted a cigarette, blew out a smoke ring, and started laughing. The players did not have a demand for gamble battle, so he created a demand for them. This has always been Han Zio's business belief. I'm a professional in creating trouble. They had the mission item, so the people of Guild of Gods returned to complete the mission immediately. And as long as they completed the mission, Sky Territory could only suck it up no matter how unhappy they were. However, Jupiter and the people came to the high rank area, but were stopped. We have completed what Mr. Han Zio told us to. Why aren't we allowed to enter? We are ordered to not allow any outsiders in. No matter what they said, the guards did not back off a single step. The people of Guild of Gods had no choice but to leave helplessly. They could only wait for Han Zio to reappear in order to complete the mission. The team left, and after walking for a while, their sight was suddenly blocked. A group of rough men surrounded them, led by Jade Green Sky. They had brought the people of Sky Territory to demand an explanation. That's pretty immoral of you, Jupiter. Our men got the mission first, and the target was also damaged to the last health by us, but you stole the kill out of nowhere. You've got to give an explanation, Jade Green Sky said with a long face. You're overreacting. If anything, you should blame yourselves for being unlucky. Jupiter had no fear. The sanctuary was a safe zone. No one could attack, and they were unafraid of being surrounded. Jade Green Sky pondered, and suddenly, he remembered the gamble battle function of the arena. Was that not the most suitable place to settle their conflict? Okay, since you're not willing to return it, we shall go to the arena and have a gamble battle. What? Why do I have to fight you? There's no benefit in winning, and I have to give up my thing if I lose. If you lose, you can only give up on what I already have. Humph, we shall make a bet. Two, money, equipment, item, anything at all, Jade Green Sky said provokingly. I'm officially inviting you to a battle, accept it if you have the guts. He really wanted this chain mission as Black Phantom's mission rewards were always rich, and it could increase Black Phantom's relationship points. It was a good deal. However, Jupiter was not provoked at all. He pushed the people of Sky Territory aside and left. Anyway, he had the item, and as soon as he completed the mission, he would be the one getting all the benefits. There was no point in taking the risk and fighting a gamble battle. The people of Sky Territory were furious. Rebels shall rule furiously demanded, Leader, are we just letting them go like this? Provocation. Force them to accept the challenge, Jade Green Sky said angrily. I'm not going to tolerate this. Ask the members to all publish posts in the forums. Provoke them as much as you can. As the Sky Territory started their attack of words, scandalous posts about the Guild of Gods appeared rapidly, painting an image that Guild of Gods was unreasonable and immoral, that they were scared to accept the challenge. As only those with a VR capsule could post or comment on the forums, there were few SHT stirras. But this time, Sky Territory had evidence and reasons, they made all the members publish posts, and started the trend. The rumors were very condescending, but Guild of Gods did not panic at all. The way Jupiter saw it, he just had to wait for Han Zio to appear and complete the mission. 
However, many days passed, and Han Zio had yet to appear. Jupiter started to get anxious. He asked the guards time after time but could not get any information on Han Zio's whereabouts. Han Zio could see the forums, too. He did not appear on purpose, and it was like putting Guild of Gods in a fire. As long as the Guild of Gods did not complete the mission, the mission item would only bring them trouble. On the day of the battle, players in the sanctuary gathered in the arena, and it soon became crowded. Who do you think will win? Guild of Gods definitely. Sky territory is no match for them. Guild of Gods actually has the moral low ground this time. Are you kidding? What's wrong about stealing kills in a game? Don't exaggerate the issue. There's a dealer opening a bet over there. I'm going there to bet on Guild of Gods. Let's go together. The scene was very noisy, almost like a live concert. The pro league had not started yet, so normal players had yet to see how strong pro players were. Thus, they were very thrilled. Everyone that came is a top-tier player or not far behind. Sadly, Lai Ji is not here, heard he went to take part in the expedition. Wait a minute, is that? Am I hallucinating? God Hao Tian. Hao Tian stood in the Long Sky team expressionless. Seeing the members of the other party, Jade Green Sky and Jupiter were both covered in cold sweat. They thought at the same time, luckily, I got the pro players here. Damn, almost got deceived by that fraud SHT. As the star player of Long Sky, Hao Tian was a god player much stronger than the first tier players. His PvP skills were amazing, and his level was much higher than average. With these advantages, he was the first to step into the ring. His attacks were ruthless and strong like a storm, defeating three Guild of Gods contestants in a row. The combat ability of the pugilist class was shown perfectly. The audience had originally expected a tight battle that would go back and forth, but it turned out to be a one-sided annihilation. The entire battle had lasted for more than five minutes. The people were astonished. After they stunned for a few seconds, deafening cheers and yells erupted all around. Impressive, cheered the ordinary spectators. God Hao Tian, God Hao Tian, yelled the passionate audience members. I love you, Hao Tian. Shrieked Hao Tian's fans. Hao Tian's performance refreshed the audience's knowledge of the upper limit of a player's strength at the current stage, and he immediately gained a lot of new fans. Although this was a private gamble battle, the excitement and passion from the audience almost felt like it was a pro competition. I won. Hao Tian's expression changed slightly. He had not expected to win so easily. It was like walking down a path for a long time, and only when he turned around did he realize how much ahead he was of the people behind him. It turned out that, without noticing, he was so much stronger than normal pro players. In the beginning, Hao Tian had just taken Han Zio's hidden storyline as a lucky opportunity, and when he made it, he did not really treasure it, only taking it as a short-term opportunity. Hao Tian's pro instinct habit made him always look far ahead to plan for his growth. Black Phantom was a mechanic, and he was a pugilist, so he felt he would not follow Han Zio all the way. He had to look for a new mentor somewhere else just for his abilities. However, at this moment, it finally occurred to him how much he benefited from this, and he began to take Han Zio more seriously. When things were settled, Han Zio appeared the next day. Sky Territory completed the mission immediately, and seeing this, Jupiter was filled with regret. If he had known that Han Zio would appear that day, if he had just endured for one more day, none of this would have happened. Of course, that was just what Jupiter thought. As long as the conflict did not become a gamble battle, Han Zio would not have appeared in front of them. He was very patient. He had once hidden and endured for half a year before he caught the opportunity to escape that secret germinal base. On the rebar of the protective wall, a group of players was welding. This job was tedious and dangerous, and the players stepped on the rebar's wobbly. Be careful, don't fall down. Just as this person said that, another person beside him slipped. The people looked at him as he fell while the sorry scream that person made descended further and further. The protective wall was very tall. It was the most dangerous mission in all of the construction missions, and players died accidentally very often. Told you to be careful. On the other rebar, a player with the ID half a cigarette when lonely said resentfully, SHT, those safer and easier missions with rich reward are all controlled by the large guilds. Us normal players can only do these worse missions. There were many types of sanctuary construction missions, and the easy missions with rich reward were all divided between the large guilds. Most of the solo players could only take the leftovers. Someone beside laughed and said, it's just a game. Why so serious? If you're so jealous, why don't you just join a guild? Humph, only the weak stay in groups, the strong play solo, half a cigarette when lonely said. Of course, he was not going to tell them the miserable experience of him getting rejected after applying to join a certain guild. They looked down from above, 
and suddenly they realized that on the sanctuary square, players that looked like the size of ants to them were gathered. This was the signature sign of Han Ziao appearing. Suddenly, announcements from other players appeared in the area channel. It seemed like Black Phantom had introduced a new function. The people who were building the protective wall put down what they were doing and went down the wall hastily. Some impatient ones even jumped down directly, died, then revived in the square, saving themselves the time it took to climb down. Half a cigarette when Lonely ran to the square, but it was already full of people. Han Zio stood in a corner of the square. Behind him was a large truck. Like other players, half a cigarette when Lonely also extended his neck and looked over curiously. Looking at the crowd, Han Zio coughed and said loudly, Recently, there has been a lot of backlog that I need to get rid of. All of it is packed into boxes. If anyone wants to buy a box, I can sell it for a low price. Give me ten, Jade Green Sky said immediately. With the thought of Black Phantom only sells high-quality products in mind, he was willing to be the first one to try. No matter what new function this was, they would know once they use it. 3,000 aquamarine dollars for one box. So expensive. Jade Green Sky was astounded. He braced himself and bought it, spending all the money he had. Although he was the guild leader, it did not mean that he could just bring the guild funds everywhere with him. This was all his own money. After Han Zio took the money, he took out ten boxes from the truck. Jade Green Sky opened nine consecutively, and his face instantly turned black. The boxes were all filled with broken parts and cheap materials. The players on the side shook their heads as they saw this. What backlog? This is all just trash. I wouldn't want any even for free. Only morons would buy such a thing. Jade Green Sky turned around and gave a vicious stare, then opened the last box without any expectations. However, as soon as he opened the box, Jade Green Sky's eyes froze, and he stared into the thing in the box. A retractable knife was lying in the box. In his vision, the name of the knife was shockingly purple. This is a piece of purple equipment. The crowd saw his expression and were curious as well. They stood on tiptoes to look into the box, and all inhaled deeply after they saw what was in it. The exclamation of shock expanded outward like a wave. Up till this moment, the players had yet to see any purple equipment. This was the first one to appear before the player's eyes. Jade Green Sky's chin almost hit the floor. He looked at the ten boxes before him and suddenly felt a sense of familiarity. Then it occurred to him. Wait a minute. This function. Isn't this opening loot boxes? This idea was contagious like a virus, and the players became interested straight away. Some gambling passionate players were already trembling in excitement and could not wait to do a 10 draws of faith, buying 10 loot boxes at once and opening them consecutively. Loot boxes, also known as the sinister path of cashing in or ultimate hand chopping method, are a classic move for the game developers to earn money. Han Zio, of course, was very familiar with this. Not only could it awaken the player's inner gambler and suck them into an inescapable hole, but he could also make a profit from it and he had just the right resources and demand to do it. He could make it into one of the recurring events to attract players. Could it be that the purple equipment only appears with 10 consecutive draws? A player said, all fired up and unable to control himself. Not likely. I feel that the rarity chance is a little weird and cannot be looked at with common sense. Firstly, we have to understand one thing, which is whether this action of Black Phantom introducing loot boxes is part of the storyline. Galaxy is extremely realistic, and every character seems to have an individual mind, almost like the real world. A character's actions definitely have its unique reason or motivation. So, is this lucky draw an official function from the game developers, or is he really cleaning his warehouse? A guy at the side pushed his glasses, and a glint of wisdom flashed in his eyes. Then, they saw this guy's ID, King of Single Draw. The surrounding players' mouths twitched. No wonder he made so much sense. He clearly was experienced, given the ID. That makes some sense, so how can we know? Someone asked. The inventory in the heavy truck became lesser and lesser. King of Single Draw's eyes sparkled. He shouted across the crowd and asked, How many more boxes are inside? Han Zio waved his hand and said, There is a total of 786 boxes, 530 left now. The players were stunned and surprised. They had thought that the boxes were unlimited, but that was not the case. Now, some spectating players could not wait anymore. They held on to their money and joined the queue. That's right, since it's limited, it's impossible for it to be an official function. Black Phantom really is clearing his backlog. However, he chose to pack it into boxes and sell them instead of just throwing them away. Um, also, there was even an undamaged rare purple equipment in the backlogs. This wouldn't make sense for it to be waste utilization. Therefore, the only explanation for this would be that this isn't really backlog clearing. 
Black Phantom is actually giving out benefits by doing this. That's right, we and humans helped him to build the sanctuary, so he wanted to reward us. King of Single Draw concluded his thoughts quite loudly, and the players in the square heard and understood instantly. It sounded logical and was quite believable. The game developer will make sure you never win anything too strong from a lucky draw for balance purposes, but Black Phantom's rewarding lucky draw is a different case. There might really be something good which means these machinery boxes might really have some god equipment that will make the entire world tremble. The crowd turned wild upon hearing that, they were extremely excited. Han Zio was stunned as he listened from the side, and he was very confused. I don't remember hiring an actor. Where did this guy come from? The players in the sanctuary discussed a lot about the first loot box event. Their interest was sparked. Han Zio grabbed the opportunity and started the next loot box event a few days later. After four times, finally, all the players in the sanctuary got used to this recurring event. At fixed intervals, the players would wait for Han Zio in the square in advance, rubbing their hands in anticipation. Every batch had hundreds of boxes. It took 20 minutes to be sold out at the start, and by the fourth time, it only took six minutes. I thought this game is different from the other lustful sluts, but you betrayed me. The content has made me uncomfortable, reported. Music lyrics, we are different, different. No guarantee in 10 consecutive draws, a miracle in a single draw, I've learned something new. Guild of Gods buying purple equipment, negotiable price, private message if interested. Sky Territory buying purple equipment, a higher price than Guild of Gods, private message if interested. Trash in all 18 draws. Damn, I'm going to rob Black Phantom's warehouse tomorrow. You have my admiration. I will take care of your wife and daughter. Rest in peace. Salute. Salute plus one. All sorts of comments came from the players. They gave Han Zio's loot boxes a name. Black Phantom's machinery box. Always leading the trends, never to be surpassed. Han Zio drove another truck of boxes, and the players swarmed in. King of Single Draw didn't buy anything. He was patient, and he observed like a hunter recording the results of other players, calculating the rarity chance. Some players were influenced by him. They sat beside him and tried to do the same thing. At this time, a voice full of confidence appeared within the crowd. Give me a hundred boxes. The people were shocked. They followed the voice and looked over as a player with the ID so poor I only have money left walked out swaggering. So poor I only have money left, is this a true rich person? A hundred boxes, that's 300,000 aquamarine dollars. Good God, he really is a truly rich person. Can we be friends? Indeed, only the large guilds have done consecutive draws before, and the highest was only 15 boxes at once. A hundred is way too much, I have never seen anything like this before. So poor I only have money left took a deep breath and opened the boxes quickly. The surrounding spectators extended their necks, and their expression changed from anticipation to shock and finally to mockery. All 100 boxes had been opened, but the best was only a blue assault rifle. The waste parts stacked like a hill. So poor I only have money left's face turned green. 100 boxes and got blue equipment, nice. You have my admiration, chief. Money can't change your fate, bro. New documentary, Galaxy, Fall of a Rich Man. On the side, King of Single Draw was full of disdain. He told the people around him, see, throwing money has no technicality at all. The best method is to calculate the rarity chance through a lot of observation and research. As he was speaking, he smiled confidentially, and light reflected off from both his teeth and glasses. Now, watch my performance. Bringing a group of people, King of Single Draw walked toward Han Zio. He paid close attention and calculated in his heart. After a few players finished buying, he suddenly yelled very loudly and shocked the crowd, then squeezed into the front line of the queue and bought the next box. Haha, <laughs> according to my experience, there's definitely something good in this box. King of Single Draw was full of confidence. He opened the box with looks of anticipation from the crowd. Congratulations, you have received times 18. The crowd suddenly turned silent and looked at him weirdly. The atmosphere was very awkward. King of Single Draw's mouth twitched. He coughed and said, you guys should know that this is a matter of probability. If at first you don't succeed, try and try again. There'll definitely be something good. However, his next single purchases were all trash. His followers looked at him with more and more doubts. Can you even do it? Bullsh tea. Next time, purple will definitely appear next time. King of single draws eyes were red. Like a gambling addict, he bought one more box. He closed his eyes and mumbled, God, please give me luck this time. After he repeated that more than a dozen times, he felt his palms heating up, like an unknown force had just descended into him. Famous words of many people flashed through his mind. 
This time, surely, King of Single Draw opened his eyes suddenly. With a gush of confidence, he yelled and flipped open the box. A pile of trash. King of Single Draw froze in place, lost. Why? Why is this happening? Are all the trends I've been researching fake? The loot boxes are fake, the world is fake, everything is fake. In the crowd, half a cigarette when Lonely touched his wallet. It was finally his turn. He hesitated and said, I'll have one. This was his first time buying. He had been spectating hesitantly until then. Although 3,000 aquamarine dollars was not really a lot, he was just a normal player. And his money had all been made through hard work of doing missions here and there, so he treasured his money a lot. However, seeing that many players had won good equipment in this event, he was a bit tempted. Then, he finally decided to just buy one box. Half a cigarette when Lonely had very low expectations. He would be satisfied with just green equipment, and he did not even dare to think about blue or purple equipment. After running to the side, half a cigarette when Lonely held his breath and opened the box. Purple light surged into his eyes. T. Per. Purple equipment. Half a cigarette when Lonely was stunned, trembling in excitement. The players beside looked over with jealous. Another lucky one. Tisk, I want purple equipment, too. How about, buy another one to try my luck. Half a cigarette when Lonely clenched his teeth, bought another box, and opened it casually. Purple light again. Half a cigarette when Lonely Mouth fell open, and his heart was hit with immeasurable surprise. The surround players looked over again, very surprised. He got another purple piece of equipment. That's really lucky. Quick, breath in the air of luck. Two draws, two wins, might as well go buy a lottery ticket. So what if he's lucky? I will be as well one day. Brother, you are allowed to show off, but don't cross the line. Some were jealous, some were amazed, some were sour. So poor I only have money left was speechless. He had bought 100 boxes at once and could not even compare with someone else casually buying two boxes. What kind of world is this? What happened to the rich's privileges? King of single draw clenched and ground his teeth. He was on the edge of losing it. Screaming in his heart, the purple equipment should have been mine. How about, another one? Half a cigarette when Lonely touched his wallet. He had just a bit more than 3,000 left. On impulse, he decided and bought one more, like a gambler tasting the sweetness of winning, falling into the abyss of cashing in. Will I win this time? Half a cigarette when Lonely suddenly regretted it a little. To win two times in a row was already extremely lucky. Three in a roll had way too low a probability. Furthermore, there were, at most, only three pieces of purple equipment in every batch of. If he won again, did that not mean he had won every purple equipment of this batch? He anxiously opened the third box, and the familiar purple light surged again. Half a cigarette when Lonely was completely stunned. All the surrounding players were completely stunned. Three single draw wins in a row. What kind of luck is this? No, this can't be called luck anymore, this is a damn blessing. The people looked at half a cigarette when lonely with shock. Miracle three single draws in a row, my knees hurt. Baby, come out and look at God. Han Zio was shocked, too. He had only placed three purple items in this batch, and they had all been bought by the same person. His luck was unbelievably good. Han Zio almost wanted to skin half a cigarette when lonely and see if he was Bennett in disguise. After he finished selling the boxes, Han Zio left. Half a cigarette when Lonely immediately got surrounded, the players all looking at him. Friend, are you selling the purple equipment? The price can be negotiated. Not for sale, half a cigarette when Lonely answered subconsciously. He turned around, and the person who had spoken to him was a male player. Half a cigarette when Lonely looked at his ID and took a deep inhale. Guild leader, morning snow twilight frost. Morning snow twilight frost scratched his chin and said casually, then, do you want to join our guild? Half a cigarette when Lonely was surprised and agreed immediately. Morning Snow Twilight Frost sent him the invitation on the spot, and after half a cigarette when Lonely agreed, the guild prefix appeared on his interface. Just like that, half a cigarette when Lonely joined the renowned guild, feeling it was all a dream. He claimed to dislike guilds because the guilds that he had requested to join all rejected him, and these small guilds were nothing compared to the ancient dynasty. The guild leader himself had invited him to join, so half a cigarette when Lonely felt refreshed and jubilant immediately. The guilds hold on to the resources, but this kind of lucky draw is the chances for us normal players to rise. This is the only way we can only get high-level equipment with little cost. Black Phantom's machinery box is really a blessing. Half a cigarette when Lonely was content. Galaxy Times published a new episode. The subtitle is Planet Aquamarine War. Han Zio's eyes sparkled, and he clicked into the video. Recently, many things have happened in Planet Aquamarine. The war between six nations and the germinal organization broke out, and it affected the entire planet. Players were experiencing this event. 
Without a doubt, this is definitely one of the main storylines of the planet, and compared to other planets, the main storyline in Planet Aquamarine broke out the earliest. Therefore, it is of significance. In today's episode, we will be analyzing the main storyline war on Planet Aquamarine, concluding the characteristics of main storyline events, and predicting its influence in the future. After hearing this, Han Zio finally understood why this episode appeared. Under his influence, the war main storyline between the Six Nations and the Germinal Organization had broken out a year in advance, and the players were still in the early stages at the moment. Most of the main storyline on the novice planets were still brewing. Therefore, the global war on planet Aquamarine attracted the most attention. It was a very good material for an episode. The war has lasted close to two months and has now entered its final stage. The Germinal Organization is at the edge of defeat. The war also made a very obvious impact on the planet's structure. A big organization for the players is now facing their end. The players belonging to the Germinal Organization are in a very bad situation, not knowing where to go after the war. There will most likely be a few possibilities, becoming the remnants of the Germinal Organization, joining the Six Nations, or maybe becoming Wanderers. From this event, it can be concluded that one of the characteristics of the main storyline is that it will have a huge impact, pose a drastic change, have a large scale, and so on. However, although the Planet Aquamarine players participated in the war main storyline, they did not make much of an impact. They were just normal soldiers and had limited effects on the big picture. Our teams arranged the data from the players in the forums and noticed something very interesting. Please look below. These are the two possible scenarios of the Planet Aquamarine main storyline that our channel deduced. This time, two tables appeared on the screen with different content, describing a revolutionary event before the start of the expedition war. Han Zio raised his eyebrows. One of the tables included the things that he had done, such as escaping from the Germinal Organization, exposing intelligence that caused the destruction of Germinal Organization bases, and so on. It was assumed that the conflict between the Six Nations and the Germinal Organization would start from the bases in various continents, which all the players would be able to take part in. The players would then grow through these opportunities, the war would only happen when the level of the players was much higher, and it would last many times longer than now. This caught Han Zio's attention, and he continued to watch. Interesting. That's right, these events marked in red are indeed the key turning points behind the war breaking out in advance, and the key to this is someone that the Planet Aquamarine players are all very familiar with. Black Phantom, Zero, Han Zio. The female host continued the segment. According to the above, Black Phantom played a main role in the storyline. Based on the information gathered by the players, we can make bold assumptions that every single main storyline will have a key character like Han Zio, otherwise known as the planet's main character. We could even say that each planet's main storyline was started by someone like Han Zio. Han Zio shook his head a few times when he heard that. In truth, the main character of the storyline was the germinal leader. But, ahem, that was not important. The male host picked up when the female host stopped. Logically, all NPCs are capable of starting events on their own, and the stronger and more experienced NPCs will be able to add diverse storylines into a planet's story. So, this also means that main storyline characters are limited by the map they're based in. In Black Phantom's case, he is currently a hot topic in Planet Aquamarine's main story. But does this mean that he will remain an important NPC in the future? Most likely not. His area of activity is limited to the beginner planet that he's on, and once space travel is unlocked in future versions, once important NPCs such as him will just become fodder. On the other hand, those NPCs that have ties with galactic organizations or entities will have the highest potential to affect future plot development. Another beginner planet, Ice Winter Planet, was under the control of the Hell Demons, a powerful galactic entity, and is more likely to have NPCs who will develop into the later stages of galaxy. Planets such as Planet Aquamarine and Planet Longtune with underdeveloped civilizations have less of a prospect. The show covered all sorts of topics, and some of the audience agreed while others argued against it. Once the hosts were done analyzing the situation on Planet Aquamarine, they moved on to interviewing the pro players. Han Zio was not interested in this and stopped watching. He had thought that the show was going to keep on praising him, but it turned out that they only turned around to backstab him in the end. Bang! The alchemy room's door was first twisted before being blown off its hinges and smashing into all the tools and equipment on the table. Emerald Grass, who had her back to the door, was shocked and turned around to see what had happened. 
All she saw was a figure by the door with blazing red hair who was walking toward her with enmity. What do you want? Emerald Grass was alarmed and pointed at the intruder. Vines started to grow out of the surrounding crates and danced in the air like venomous snakes. Hila was surrounded by a dark red energy, and with eyes also blazing with a crimson light, she said in a cold voice, Give it. Emerald Grass frowned and walked to the side as she revealed a row of test tubes on a table, each filled with some sort of bright red liquid. She shook her head and asked, Do you mean these potions? These are all developed from your sister's DNA. Do you want to try? They have pretty amazing effects. Gila, without even hesitating, raised her hand and shot out her red energy toward the test tubes. Emerald Grass cursed silently and hurriedly moved her plants to block Gila's attack to protect the potions. Bang! The dark red energy waves cut through the vines like hot knife through butter, and the clean cut sprayed green juice all over the place. Quick, inform Lord Black Phantom about this. The guard captain immediately made a decision and turned around. But before he could get very far, a black shadow had appeared at the end of the road and sped over. It was Han Zio. Han Zio was always monitoring the alchemy room, and the moment he saw the fight begin, he rushed over. Stop. Emerald Grass's forehead was covered in sweat. Her powers were not as strong as Gila's when it came to direct confrontations, and she was afraid that she would sustain injuries the moment she stopped using her powers. I will stop if she stops. Gila's expression remained unchanged as she had already steeled herself to kill Emerald Grass. Han Zio frowned, and faint blue light started to gather under his feet. He lightly stepped, causing this energy to spread through the floor, causing a mini earthquake that split open the ground. Buzz. Eight metal gun barrels popped out of the ground and one could hear sounds of gears locking into place. They quickly turned into mini turrets and were pointed straight at the two combatants. Trap-type mini mobile turret. A new creation. They were placed in all the important areas in the shelter and could only be activated by Han Zio. I think you may be forgetting who owns this place, Han Zio said in a low voice. Hila gritted her teeth but backed off in the end, albeit with a murderous expression still on her face. Emerald Grass finally relaxed and let out a breath as she massaged her temple. She had just been attacked in the mind by Gila's shockwaves and was suffering from some painful headaches. You didn't keep up your promise of protecting my sister. Gila turned her head and stared right into Han Zio's eyes. Han Zio sighed helplessly. You're overreacting. Emerald Grass held up one of the test tubes. Humph, I made these using the DNA I got from Aurora's hair strands. I was just recycling. What are you so mad about? You can't. Gila said in a cold voice. To her, Emerald Grass's actions were too similar to Germinal's, and it made her remember some painful memories from the past. Neither wanted to back off, and Han Zio's head was starting to hurt. Conflict with allies was not easy to resolve. At this moment, Aurora strolled over in her wheelchair. Aurora looked much better than she had done a month ago. Her once shriveled hair had become soft and smooth, her once bony body had started to take on some weight, and she was emitting a positive and shiny aura. Her power that had been suppressed for so long was finally released, and it allowed her to look like a normal person again within a month. Sis, why are you fighting with the doctor? Aurora asked in a worried tone. Emerald Grass stared at Gila and then gave a thorough explanation of what had happened. Aurora was shocked. She blinked a few times, then said, It's just some hair. I don't really mind if it can help Uncle Han. Before, there was only her sister who treated her well. But now, with Han Zio caring for her too, she was happy to contribute in any way she could. This way, she would feel better as she was somewhat paying back Han Zio's favor. Han Zio did not really have an opinion about this. He knew that Emerald Grass was conducting experiments, but since she only used some hair, he had just turned a blind eye to it. Gila had definitely overreacted a bit this time. Aurora gave of a bright smile and said, Sis, you don't have to worry. I'm not that fragile. Gila remained silent for a while before she turned around and started to walk away. Okay. After this whole fiasco, Han Zio let the guards take care of the cleanup. Emerald Grass walked up to him and had an odd smile on her face. I didn't know there were this many turrets near the alchemy room. You're keeping a watch over me, aren't you? Han Zio gave her a glance. Eh here. Don't worry. I'm not a fool. After all, I'm a tool that you obtained. Tools aren't supposed to have a say in anything. Emerald Grass twirled around with her hair as she said that with a faint smile. Oh. Han Zio turned and left after only saying a word. Emerald Grass's expression froze. That's it. What kind of reaction was that? He was not angry, nor was he trying to give himself an excuse. He did not even try to threaten her or anything. Am I that unimportant? The gentle moonlight shone on the right side of Gila's body, and he could see her staring blankly into the night sky. It seemed like she had been standing there for a while. 
After thinking for a moment, Hanzio lightly leapt onto the balcony. Tila heard the movement and asked emotionlessly without turning her head, What are you doing up here? Just looking around. Why are still up this late in the night? Humph. Tila did not reply. Hanzio then took a seat to the side and shook his head. You are a bit too extreme today. I don't think you were that hit-headed in the past. Tila frowned. What's that got to do with you? What's it got to do with me? Hanzio touched his chin and muttered, I don't think you said that back when I saved you and your sister, did you? Hila's face froze. After remaining silent for a while longer, she finally let out a sigh and said slowly, I'm just a bit lost. Feeling lost, Hanzio put a cigarette in his mouth and took out his lighter. Well that's easy to solve. Just take your sister back to the germinal organization, and I guarantee that you'll never feel bored again. Hila glared at him and stayed quiet for a second. She then said to herself, I wasn't able to protect my sister and I made her endure so much suffering. It's all my fault. To protect her, I kept on training myself. Even though the battle carved a bloody past in my history, I will never regret what I did. The more lives I killed with my own hand, the safer I felt. It is the only way I could prove to myself that I was protecting my sister and wash away the remorse I have. Back in the germinal organization, we rarely saw each other. I knew that she wanted to go to the outside world, which is why I always prepared stories for her and shared my experience from the world outside. Now that she has a new life, is making many new friends, and has even started to take care of a pet, she won't need my stories anymore. Hanzio could not light the cigarette in his mouth, so he brought out his gun and shot a few bullets up into the sky and used the hot gun barrel to light the cigarette. He inhaled before replying, that bear was supposed to be my pet. Saving her from the misery had always been my wish. Now that I have fulfilled it, Hila ignored Han Zio's comment and continued. She doesn't need me to protect her anymore. Hila opened up her palm, and a dark red aura flowed through her fingers. Hila stared at her hands and said, Back in the days, all I wanted to do was spend every minute training my power to crush the germinal organization by myself. Now, my sister and I are safe, so strength and power don't matter to me anymore. I can spend all the time in the world with my sister, and this is my ultimate mate wish. Hila then closed her hands and formed a fist, crushing the red light in her hand. She closed her eyes, but the life I always craved only brings emptiness in my heart. I'm so lost and don't know what to do. I hate this feeling. After living a dangerous life for years, letting your guard down may be uncomfortable. This is the classic symptom that soldiers face as they leave the battlefield, Han Ziao answered. Of course I believe that there's another reason. I think that violence is in your blood, and every single cell in your body craves the taste of blood. Living a peaceful life may be a drug that slowly chips away your motivation for living. Hila had a weird expression and said, Are you trying to get me to do bad things? What else? Do you want me to comfort you? Han Ziao shook his head. I don't need to tell you those cheesy and fluffy lines, and you are not a kind of person that needs consolation. Your sister is your sister, and you are you. You don't need to give up your true personality for your sister, and she also does not want you to change yourself. Stop finding excuses. I can see that battles and violence are what you truly desire, and the hunger for power is what drives you to move forward. The world is much larger than you think. Even though I can beat ten of you, in the eyes of the universe, there are people that are still stronger than me. What makes you say that you can beat ten of me? Hila disagreed. Han Zio suddenly released a murderous intent in his eyes. Hila stepped back and unknowingly used her power. She was cautious as the dark red light drifted around her body. Maybe one day, I will take away your sister, just like what the germinal organization did. At that point, if you are still not strong enough to fight me, haha, that's why you need to get stronger, or else you will regret it. Han Zio withdrew his murderous intent with a straight face, but Hila still could not calm down. For a moment, her instincts told her that Han Zio was not kidding. He was dead serious. As if she saw the wolf's teeth behind the sheep mask, a chill traveled through her spine. I can create some robots to help you train if you want, or you can learn from emerald glass and practice with some other aspers. Well, if there's nothing else, I'm going back to sleep. I'm leaving my cigarette here. Han Zio jumped down from the rooftop and headed back to his place. After Han Zio's shadow faded away, Hila finally relaxed and let out a long sigh. Staring at the slowly burning cigarette, she picked it up and inhaled. She closed her eyes and released the smoke from her mouth, enjoying the taste from the tobacco. A long time passed before she opened her eyes. Her worries and anxiety suddenly disappeared, and all that was left was a cold, lonely feeling. He really is a monster, Hila said to herself and laughed. But so am I.
a helicopter landed on the roof of Sanctuary 1. Bennett, who was waiting on the roof, laughed. This is the first time you've arrived before anyone else. This isn't like you. Han Zio turned back to the chopper and said, Take off now. Waste all the fuel in this thing before we come back. The board meeting will take place after the war has officially ended. It will probably happen in the next few days. How many days? I'm still uncertain. The situation now is a bit complicated. Bennett lowered his voice. It's hard for the situation to move forward. Han Zio's eyes flickered. After they headed to the meeting room, Han Zio asked, So, what's wrong? Bennett took out the intel and explained, In summary, we already cut off all the routes from the headquarters to the outside world. The Six Nations have completely trapped the germinal organization. However, the troops of the Six Nations are still far away from the area around the headquarters, and they have no intention of attacking. Well, since they already destroyed all the other bases, isn't it simple to just bombard the headquarters and end the war? Because of your intel, most of the nuclear warheads have been disabled, and the rest of the nuclear warheads have been carried back to the headquarters. Because of the limited supplies, they could not wipe out the entire army of the Six Nations. However, there are quite a number of nuclear warheads, and there would be devastating consequences to the climate of this planet if they went off. From research conducted by various meteorologists, if the nuclear war heads exploded at the same time. In the next 5 to 15 years, the radiation will drastically worsen the climate of the world, and Andrea will be the highest radioactive place on the entire planet. Raylan and Theseus suggested ignoring the consequences and the lives of the hostages and directly attacking the headquarters. Then they can finally get rid of their mortal enemy once and for all. Star Dragon has yet to respond. Maple wanted to force the germinal organization to surrender, and Hesla suggested attacking the headquarters with ground troops and trying to save the hostages. As for Ordina, they used various excuses to oppose all kinds of attacks toward the germinal organization. Hanzio was surprised. I understand all the concerns of the other nations, but what is Ordina trying to do? They want to back off after all the fighting. Bennett knocked on the table and replied, It is the last year of the term for Ordina's leader. Their political sphere has a lot of parties, so there are a lot of competitors for his position. If they can drag the war until the next year's election, they can use the reason of national security and war to automatically get elected for the next term. Han Zio did not know what to say. That's a ballsy move. So, which side is the Six Nations leaning toward? They want to try to make the enemy surrender. The Six Nations have their anti-missile defense system all the time, and that if the headquarters fires even one missile, they will attack and bombard the base. However, this is the worst outcome they can have. So, the Six Nations have sent a last message to the base, hoping that they will surrender and release the hostages. Then they will spare the lives of the germinal organization. Bennett then shook his head. But until now, the germinal organization still hasn't responded. The headquarters were as dense as a black mountain range covered in dead silence. The ground was full of equipment left by the soldiers, and the pungent smell of gas and smoke filled the city. In the buildings were the hiding soldiers. The atmosphere was dead and lifeless, and all of the soldiers stared out the windows with eyes that looked lost. In the underground command room of the headquarters, the screen displayed the situation right now. The single blue dot represented the lonely headquarters, while the red field, which represented the Six Nations, covered the entire continent. There was nowhere for them to run. The senior officials quietly exchanged eye contact, but no one spoke. The room was dead silent. What do you plan to do? A senior official asked after a while. The leader shut his eyes. While everyone was worrying about the next step, the leader replied with a hoarse voice, launch all the nuclear missiles. Everyone was stunned by the words. The Six Nations have already locked us down. This is suicide. So what? Do you want to beg for mercy in front of the Six Nations? The leader's expression did not change. Don't forget the vision of the germinal organization. There can be no defeat. Death is the only way. All the senior officials had great hatred toward the Six Nations. However, in the face of death, not everyone could stand their ground in their belief. Moreover, from the situation, being suicidal would not achieve anything. There was a chance that the Six Nations would break their promise and kill them after they surrendered, but there was still a slim of hope that they could survive. I disagree. Is there anyone who agrees with him? Some officials looked right back at the leader and some lowered their heads, but all of them replied with silence. Facing the line of life and death, the leader and the officials had a disagreement, as if there was a huge cliff that separated them. What if I insist? The leader said calmly. Launching the nuclear weapons requires two keys, the system authorization, and your fingerprint and iris. You have the authorization, but you only have a key, while the vice leader has the other key, and he is on our side. 
The leader looked around and asked, So, where is he? Of course he is not here. We won't give you any chance. The leader shook his head. Looks like you made your decisions long ago. Don't be reckless. We still have the chance to bring the uprising again as a nation. So we should not simply sacrifice our lives. As he was talking, the leader had taken out two keys that were needed to launch the rocket, and one of them was supposed to be with the vice leader. How? How did you? Why is the key with you? Or as the vice leader, no one could believe what had just happened, and the room turned into chaos. The leader held onto the keys without saying anything. His voice shook slightly as he made a hand sign behind his back. The leader shook his head and looked at the crowd. Megal, you secretly had conversation with Maple. Dorios, you made some compromise with the Oridina. Newt, Raylan promised to provide protection. The leader mentioned most of the people in the room, and seeing everyone's shocked expression, he slowly said, The consequences of surrendering for you, of course, will be different from the normal soldiers. The door opened, and a dozen executive officers surrounded the senior officials. These executive officers were all part of their army. After the war started, there were countless injuries and casualties for the executive officers, but the officials had all had the brains to protect their own interests and power. The main ideal of the germinal organization that gathered the people was hatred, not loyalty toward a certain person. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and enable notifications so you don't miss the next chapter.